Hi everyone. Thanks for watching my vlog. This is the second day of my trip and today we are gonna go and explore Potsdam. Potsdam is uh, the capital of Brandenburg and I know Berlin and it's the state of Brandenburg too. But Berlin is not the capital of Brandenburg but the capital of the whole Germany. So whenever I travel, I usually get excited when UNESCO World Heritage Sites pop up. And we are going to go to one in Potsdam. We are going to go to San Susi Park, San Susi Palace. And later we're going to stop by Sicilian Hof too. It's where they did the Potsdam Conference. So the vlog's going to start quietly. It's already started, but I know. After the pre, the, the, the vlog's gonna start quietly from the Ritz. We are gonna stop by um, Potch Restaurant in the Ritz for breakfast. Let's go. So this is the breakfast buffet. They have hard boiled eggs, roasted tomatoes, Nuremberg sausages, chicken sausages, fresh fruits. I love that passion fruit. Uh, but you can always also order uh, some made to order stuff like some inside a bag or waffles. Have you seen that honeycomb? We also have a mini boulangerie in here. They have a, a mini patisserie with all the uh, pastries in the corner and jams and a couple of kinds of butter. We have tea, we have different kinds of juice, we have very nice waiters who approach you if you want some freshly made waffles or eggs. This is my favorite. They serve mimosa every morning and then you can take home some coffee to go before you leave the restaurant. It's amazing. I went back a couple of times to the buffet and I had seconds of the mimosa, so I left the hotel slightly tipsy, which is good and not good because it's just the start of the day. After our breakfast in the Ritz, we are gonna go and explore Potsdam. This time we're gonna explore we're gonna try explore Berlin, Potsdam, and Oranienburg using their public transportation. And if you follow me around, you're gonna see 
that the public transport station in Germany is very clean and it kind of gives me the feeling of uh, Japan and Korea's public transportation which is very efficient. One thing that I really love about Berlin's public transportation is the honor system. You just you know, make sure you validate your ticket in those little validating machines in every platform like that one and then you can ride all of them without having to scan anything. But remember we already bought our 7 day ABC pass from the airport which means we can take the trains, the bus, the trams all over Berlin and up to Potsdam and Oranienburg which is the sea area which also includes the Berlin Brandenburg International Airport. My only concern is the announcements in the trains and the buses. Sometimes they are not in English and it's a little hard to pronounce the stops. They're all in Dutch. So you better pay attention. And I didn't pay attention so I left the train on a stop that is not my stop which is kind of confusing confusing because uh, there are three consecutive stops that, that started with Potsdam or something and then another stop after that is Potsdam blah 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 so I took off on the first one which is the wrong one and I have to get off on the Hockmannhof which is like the central station in, Spot in Potsdam this is the central station in Potsdam which is I just left it and they have a lot of trams outside they also have a lot of buses and um, I didn't see any train but um, the, the trams are very frequent and what's really cool is even have their own ticket machine inside the tram so if you don't have a pass you can buy one in the tram so we ended up here because of google directions and voila there's a brandenburg gate if you look very closely it was dated 1770 in roman numerals and this is the first i think this is the first brandenburg gate and a couple of years later they built the bigger Brandenburg Gate in Paris or Platz in Berlin. So uh, this is a nice walk. Um, the area is very quiet and it's really beautiful. The, the train ride took around an hour and now we're entering Sanssouci Park is probably the biggest uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site in Berlin or Germany, I'm not sure. The, the sensitive park is really wide and it's, uh, it's hard to explore every single corner. But don't worry, we're gonna cover a lot of it because I walked all over the park and we're gonna start walking to the Church of Peace. It's uh, and I think it's called the Church of Peace because it just is very peaceful. This is a Protestant church. Germany had a reformation 
which kind of started when Martin Luther published his uh, 95 Theses, which is basically it's a basically calling out the Pope for being able to lessen your punishment in the purgatory if you donate to the church or something like that. I'm not very sure. Which is a kind of true because salvation if if uh, if salvation equals money what's going to happen to the poor people what if you don't have any money you're just going to go straight to hell or something sure what kind of trees these are but they kind of look like bricks to me So right beside the church is the picture gallery, which is uh, closed at the moment, and I'm really sad about that because the inside is beautiful, it's a Rococo style, and they have a Caravaggio, and a few Rubens painting in there. Maybe later, can go back. So a couple of minute walk from the picture gallery and right beside the obelisk portal is the Neptune Grotto. This was built by Frederick the Great. There is Neptune with his trident. Neptune is the Roman equivalent of the Greek god Poseidon is the god of the sea and it's very evident in the design of the grotto because they have seashells everywhere there is uh, supposed to be water fountain maybe because it's winter that's why it's not working Paris, they usually move their marbles inside the museums to protect it from the elements. But here, they just let it be. They have a, they just leave them outside. They have a, the stairs is marble. They have, a, but a lot of the there you go. It looks like Birdhauser behind, but it looks like it's just. 
to protect the marble. So this park is actually Frederick the Great's garden. It's a big garden. This is fall, um, this is around November, and uh, it might not be a good idea to come here during November because around this time they, have, they, they, they covered all the sculptures, not all of them, most of the sculptures with birdhouses to protect them from the elements. So it might be a good idea to come here before November. Right beside the picture gallery is the palace and right now we're in front of the fountain at the basement, the base of the, the hill the palace is on. So this is, this palace is Frederick the Great's, kind of like a rest house, um, he wants uh, Probably he just wants uh, a getaway from the hustle and bustle of uh, the city, so he built it for himself. He named it Sans Souci. It's uh, French for without cares. Sans, without, and cares, Souci. garden to look like a vineyard. Well, it's kind of like a vineyard because there's a lot of grapes all over the place and and the garden is actually a huge park. But um, November is really not a good time to visit San Susie because of, it's kind of a... they covered all the sculptures and, and all the leaves are gone from the so it might be a good idea to visit around October so you can still see some of the leaves and if you want to see a lot of the green stuff you might want to visit during the summer. But I'm not complaining because this is beautiful too and uh, the only thing is if you really want to see the sculptures you might want to come visit earlier than November. So these are mostly grapes, but inside the glass greenhouse, inside the glass cabinets, are figs. So just right below the dome, you're going to see Sun Susi in bold uh, letters, but with a comma in the middle and a period at the end. Lost. 
this a rock or is this a rococo? It looks like it's a rococo. The color is very rococo. So Frederick the Great really built this palace as a rest house and as you can see it's just one story and you can easily go in and out of the palace Sanso Sea. Frederick the Great is so passionate about Rococo that him and in his court eventually developed their own style and they called it Frederician Rococo. So the Prussian king, Frederick the Great, he died in this palace and he was not buried here at first but uh, after a few after a few years they buried him here and this is his tombstone and sometimes they leave potatoes and flowers potatoes maybe because uh, he promoted the potato as a primary food source or maybe he just really liked potato this is the other side of the palace. This is where you enter the Sancho Sea Palace. The only thing is, uh, it's a little challenging to get to get to the museums uh, because of the COVID pandemic and uh, and it's a little hard to plan ahead of time because um, of the COVID pandemic because of the pandemic you're going to have to enter museums uh, in a time slot and sometimes the tickets are sold out because they can only let a lot of they can only let so much people in. The easiest way to get to the tickets is to to buy your tickets maybe a few days before because uh, sometimes they get sold really fast. This is the ticket center. You can buy our tickets here or you can do it online. This windmill is older than the palace. There's a cafe right in front of it. It looks nice, but unfortunately, maybe because of the pandemic, it's closed. So this structure in front of us is a two-story structure and it was constructed as an extension of the palette for the guests, also in Federation Rococo style. But it's closed so we cannot really go there for now, maybe later we can go back to Germany.
Station washroom, may buy it. Fifty cent. I mean. Yeah. So if you need to use the washroom, there's a washroom right by the visitor center, but you're gonna have to pay fifty cents, half a euro. from the side and this side is uh, Frederick the Great's side the, the other half is for Frederick the Great's uh, guests or court I love this scene lane there's a painting of uh, the goddess flower throwing flowers the next room would be a small gallery it's a long gallery of paintings and a few sculptures next room would be his uh, library and it's a little hard to find it's I'm just like walking in circles I couldn't find it but I found it and it's closed there's only like a glass a glass pane where you can peek into the library
Frederick the Great died in this armchair, and there's a painting of him with his nephew on the other side of the room, right there. The death of Frederick the Great. Room would be uh, a little concert hall where he would play music with his uh, court musicians. Um, Frederick the Great is actually an accomplished flutist. He composed his own, uh, maybe more than a hundred sonatas. One of his uh, court musicians is actually um, Johann Sebastian Bach's son. There's a painting of uh, the Prussian king where he was playing a flute. It was by Menzel, and it was displayed in Alta's National Gallery in the Museum Island. And I'm going to put a clip of the painting from the Museum Island right now. The next room, his audience room. Thank you. 
enlightenment and one of the most influential characters of the 18th century. Frederick found Voltaire's advocacy of reason and free thinking very persuasive, and while he was still a young man, he made contact with the philosopher. The man of that time was French. Frederick himself spoke French. The next room would be the Marble Hall. And it's located right below the dome, right in the middle of the palace. Then to the right of the marble hall, there would be around five guest rooms for his court. And one of the rooms is the, the Voltaire room, because the French philosopher stayed with him uh, as a member of his court for around three years. So around, um, around here, all of these rooms are going to be guest rooms, and you'll notice that there's no bathroom. The, the bathroom is probably hiding behind the walls, or maybe it's true that Europeans actually, around this time, they don't really believe in taking a bath, because they believe that um, taking a bath opens the pores, and once the pores are open, uh, diseases could go in and you could get sick. So maybe it's true that uh, Marie Antoinette really only took a bath once a month and some of the kings sometimes they don't even take a bath and that the court actually stinks. But here in Germany it might be different, they might be much cleaner I am not sure, but I have not seen a washroom where you could take a bath. 
or something. Uh, maybe they go to the ancient Roman baths, but um, I'm not sure because of the Renaissance period, hygiene usually consists of washing your hands and your face, and usually they just change their undergarments, and that's it. And if they stink, they usually just spray a lot of perfume. The next room would be Voltaire's room, the French philosopher.
that's it. The the palace is only, the palace only has a、uh, ten rooms or eleven rooms. It's a、uh, pretty small. It's basically like a rest house. It doesn't really look like a typical palace where it has a lot of rooms.、Uh, once this palace was built. Frederick the Great built a new palace, which has more than a hundred rooms. And he's not gonna go there because it's closed and it's far kind of far from from San Susi Palace. And also, we don't have a lot of time because after this, we are gonna go to. Decide where they did the Potsdam Conference, which is the Sicilian Hall Palace. Extension to the palace. This is the of San Susi Palace, but it's closed, so we're not going to go in there. So now I'm a little curious about the Chinese tea house. So we're gonna walk towards the Chinese tea house. It's not that far. It will take like three minutes from San Susi Palace. It's、uh, right there. You can see it. It looks like they covered the sculptures. To how somebody describes a tea house from a letter, because if they have seen what a Chinese tea house really looks like, it's not going to look like this. These little knock house things. I tried to walk to the new palace because I, I I would at least want to see what it looks like from the outside. But、um, after walking for a few minutes, I decided to just go the other way 
towards uh, Cecilia and Hoff Palace because we might not have enough time to explore because uh, the sun sets around 4 in the afternoon so it gets really dark after 4 o'clock in the afternoon. exploring during the day it might be a good idea to visit Europe during the summer so you have a so the sun doesn't set too early this video is a little too long so I'm gonna put the rest of the video for part two we're gonna explore Sicily and off and then we're gonna go back to the Red Slater in Berlin thanks for watching guys <laughs>